Welcome back to the Oral Health Podcast, where I'm talking to another dentist who is passionate about food. Today I'm talking to Dr. Hussein Shafi, who is documenting his journey as a dentist, as well as starting a YouTube channel in lockdown called The Hungry Dentist, where he shows off his favourite recipes and talks about how important food is to him, as well as dentistry. I learned a lot from talking to Hussein, and I hope you will as well. It really was a brilliant conversation. Do you want to just start um, just telling me a little bit about yourself? Uh, I was born in Iran and uh, I moved when I was quite young to Sweden to study and uh, study dentistry because I knew what I want to be. And uh, to be honest with you, the reason I wanted to become a dentist was it's funny because when I was a child, and obviously that time uh, there wasn't much of brushing, not um, uh, people didn't have that kind of information that obviously it's very important brushing and flossing and all uh, this. And I remember that um, I was uh, going to dentist uh, on a kind of weekly basis. Always I had uh, toothache and problems. So, and then kind of when I was eight, nine, I was thinking that, you know what? I'm going to become a dentist. At least I have a healthy mouth or healthy teeth. And uh, yes, decided to become a dentist and obviously studied dentistry in Sweden. And I moved to UK with my family in uh, 1998. And since then, I've been uh, working as a dentist and um, doing implants. I'm an implant surgeon, so placing implants. Mm -hmm. and restoring implants and you enjoy that you enjoy your job very much yes very much yeah <laughs> I, I would do people asking me that what would you do if you wanted to kind of start again I would say uh, dentistry and if it wasn't dentistry I would become a chef oh yeah because you do yeah. um you do make a lot of cooking videos and um it's quite good and interesting to see um, like dentists and other professions post about food. Like another dental chef was on Master Chef as well, and that's where I kind of started thinking about the link between our oral health and um, what we put into our bodies. Because everything we put in has to pass through the mouth, so it is more connected than I think we think on the surface. So, have you always enjoyed cooking? Absolutely. I used to when I was a kid. I used to watch my mum uh, when she was cooking or so, and. Uh, for many years now, I'm uh, cooking. I'm the main person cook at home. <laughs> My kids enjoy very much uh, Iranian. Mainly I do Iranian, Iranian food. And uh, the, the reason be, uh, behind the hungry dentist, it was during obviously the lockdown and my daughter suggested, and we started as a, like, a, like a joke, but uh, I like it. And mm -hmm. uh, I like to show others if they can obviously cook, if they can, uh, important is, uh, cook healthy. When I cook, I always think about the nutrition, how obviously healthy those nutrition is. I'm not using much of sugary stuff or fatty stuff in my cooking. I don't use much of red meat, for example, uh, lots of uh, fresh vegetables and fresh, fresh herbs. And basically all the ingredients is fresh. Mm -hmm. And obviously the, the, the research has shown that uh, the nutrition and also vitamins is 40 times more in uh, fresh food than obviously processed uh, foods. So mm -hmm. it's really, really important for me as well to show others that is how, how important it is. Yeah, 100%. And so if what's your favorite thing to cook? I know you said you like to cook Iranian food, but what's like your favorite thing to make? I think I would say uh, rice, uh, chicken and uh, barberries. One uh, one of the uh, ingredients that I always use in my uh, cooking is saffron, which saffron has antioxidant, uh, antidepressant, and uh, also improve inflammation and also the aid weight loss, funny mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> so I use a lot of uh, saffron and uh, I think it gives you a beautiful flavor and also is healthy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I like when I cook, I use turmeric for a lot of the same things. Like, and I drink a lot of turmeric tea and it, it apparently is really healthy, but it also is just very like calming. It's quite a nice yes. way to chill out and 
yeah i'm i love cooking as well so i'm my oh, kitchen always looks crazy of a night time <laughs> because all the pans are everywhere and yeah, yeah. but i like it it's like a, a very creative thing for Absolutely. me to, to do yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry one of, one of the reason i'm i cook and enjoy cooking is because it makes me relax and when i'm cooking i don't think about anything else and people commenting a lot uh, so yes to be honest with you i'm, I'm relaxing very much when i'm cooking and you you, you mentioned turmeric mm -hmm. every single dish i make the first ingredient is turmeric because you know that uh, turmeric has got uh, also is anti-inflammatory uh, in, in, improve brain function and very very good for uh, for example osteoarthritis it's lots of uh, people above 50 in in western countries we see unfortunately mm -hmm. suffering from osteoarthritis osteopenia and these effects obviously around the teeth as well for example lack of k2 vitamin Mm -hmm. It's uh, make result is obviously you get uh, brittle bones and uh, it's not a strong bone. And if you add vitamin, for example, K2, you have a stronger bone and then obviously uh, kind of prevent kind of gum disease. Vitamin K2 has been proven even lots of thousands of uh, research showing if you're taking, for example, vitamin K2 with vitamin D3 or so, uh, it's a funny because people actually, they don't know uh, they, they research showing that you shouldn't take vitamin D on its own and it should, uh, should, you should take vitamin D and K2, but mm -hmm. actually you can take with, uh, vitamin K2 without vitamin D3. And we know obviously proven that vitamin D3 is uh, important for the teeth uh, and also bone building, mm -hmm. uh, all, all, all uh, these effects. And also K2, um, give you kind of give more bone dense prevent tooth decay funny enough and uh, all these i use very often the ingredients i use mm -hmm. uh, is always thinking what should i use that is more uh, kind of health benefit and uh, more uh, kind of better for for my mm -hmm. self and my family yeah as i mean the fuel that we put into our bodies it affects everything so it makes sense that the mouth and the teeth go through that process as well because like i say it's the first thing the food it hits when it goes into your bodies as it passes through your mouth at least for the vast majority of people and so why then is should we all be taking care with what we eat if it went with our oral health and what should we all be doing? Like, is there some simple things that we can all do? I know there's the standard cut out sugar and do this, do that, but what, what would kind of be your, your basic advice to people? The, obviously, you know that the, 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 the mouth is a, is a gateway uh, to health. And uh, if the mouth uh, is not healthy and is impossible, absolutely impossible that you get a, a um kind of healthy body and mm -hmm. whatever as you mentioned whatever we put in, in our mouth is affect everything else wow. say for example we know that the reason for uh, gum disease part of obviously brushing flossing and uh, all these uh, it's a lack of uh, nutrition lack of vitamins as i mentioned for example one is k2 mm -hmm. uh, give you bone density uh, vitamin C, vitamin C contribute to collagen, collagen build, building also, and uh, mm, for example, mm, vitamins that uh, mm, prevent mm, mm, diabetes, for example, all these, these are affecting obviously gum, uh, soft tissue and uh, bone. And uh, we know for fact, more and more research showing that the bacteria in, in gum disease uh, contribute to heart disease. has got a direct link, even um, immature uh, childbirth and uh, all these. Obviously, it's very, very important what we eat and uh, what, what we put in our mouth. And out of all of your, um, your videos, if, like you say, with the turmeric and the saffron, a few ingredients come up like a fair a fair amount so i would imagine then that that's because they do have 
so like oral health benefits so things like yogurts and and garlic and eggs and and this kind of staple ingredients but what other kind of oral health benefits that things like garlic and eggs and yogurts that what can they provide uh, for example garlic you mentioned garlic is is uh, antioxidant and antioxidant is important for the obviously gum then it has got the vitamin b6 C, vitamin C, fiber, and these are important, obviously, for health benefits. And uh, onion, you mentioned as well, um, it's supporting heart uh, health, bone health, and uh, and also it's antibacterial as well. So the garlic is same, uh, the same as antibacterial. So it's, it's, it's really important. For example, ginger as well, the same uh, antioxidant um help body um uh, fight against kind of chronic uh, disease like uh, blood pressure heart disease all these mm -hmm. so uh as as you as, as uh, you see in my videos most of the ingredients has got um type of uh, benefits and nutrition that is very very important for mm -hmm. uh, for our body and uh, all of them are fresh, you know, that herbs and vegetables, all these. And unfortunately, when people, they don't realize it and um, a part of obviously smoking and brushing and everything, and there is no proper diets and nutrition, they losing the teeth. And when you lose the teeth, you can't chew properly and then you swallow, then you end up with a digestion problem and you going on a medication, side effects, another medication, another, another, and then you obviously your body become very, very unhealthy. And mm -hmm. I see every day my patients and coming in, they don't have a teeth or they have a teeth just in front teeth and the back teeth are not important for them because nobody see them. But is I, I try to explain that this is the function, is not a static function. You need your molar uh, to be able to chew properly and digest properly. So, um, and most of them, they don't have teeth or missing lots of teeth. They have a lots of health issue as well. Well, with, um, if someone is missing a lot of teeth then, do they generally have to go to like a soft food diet and then healthy, I'm trying to think like if you can't crunch, like a lot of vegetables and fruits are very crunchy, what, what then you could replace with that? Cause smoothies are packed with sugar and so, things like soups, I guess, things that are like nutritious, I mean, but not yeah, crunchy. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Because obviously it's, it's important that we eating crunchy stuff, eating crunchy food, uh, eating nuts, for example, because it's good for teeth that they can obviously grind. So uh, yes, if they don't have a teeth, so many teeth missing in their mouth, the, the obvious thing is they need to switch to something soft, for example, um, pie, kind of pasta soft food soup as you said or sausages those those that that soft cheese sandwich is very soft so first of all they are not nutrition and also it's not enjoyable because they have no choice mm -hmm. and i see the health benefit is very is, is, is funny because i had a patient uh, two three years ago he is around 76 77 he came to me without any teeth, not even a single tooth in his mouth. And he was coming with a crutcher and he couldn't walk, his wife holding his arm and he was very, very unhealthy. He couldn't breathe sitting in my chairs, hardly could breathe or so. And then we discussed what we need to do. And then I suggested we placing some implant in upper and lower jaw, and then we give him fixed teeth. Uh, so we started the treatment and it took nearly five to six months to finish. And uh, obviously when I finish a uh, treatment, I see the patients a few weeks later to see how they do or so. And then he came back a month later, believe me or not, he was absolutely a changed mind. And honestly, he looked years younger. And then he sat down and then I said, oh, uh, how are you? And he said, I'm great. And he said that I need to make a complaint. I said, oh my God, okay, tell me what's the problem. He said, everything's great, but my kids, they don't want to take me to restaurants. I said, why? Because I choose the most expensive steaks and cost them 
40 pounds uh, per my meal. But before I had teeth, they used to take me to restaurant and I had a mash and potato or something and it cost five, five pounds. This is my complaint. So that is, that is a great. Uh, That's a good complaint. He just absolutely. wants to enjoy his dinner, leave him to it. <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, so teeth are important. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, that's a nice story. That's a nice story. I mean, I, honestly, I see them on uh, a daily basis. When they get teeth, they eat better. They switch to healthier food as well because they get confident. They go to restaurants and eat healthy food. They start cooking or so. But when they don't have a teeth, they don't go to restaurant or they don't use fresh, as you said, crunchy vegetables or so then everything deteriorating, their, their health and everything else. But when they get the teeth, suddenly they become a different person. Mm -hmm. And we see them every day. All, this is the one of the reasons I wanted to become a dentist because the satisfaction is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And see people obviously uh, smiling and uh, enjoying what we do for them. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it's a lot of work for a, a very good reward. Absolutely. And I still think People, uh, we need to educate more people more and more and more that important the teeth, even a single tooth is very important because you're missing a single tooth, you're thinking is not important, but it is important because when the tooth missing, other teeth start uh, getting effect of that missing tooth and start tilting towards the front or back uh, tooth and uh, causing food trap and everything else in the neighboring tooth. And then obviously a tooth missing, the opposing tooth starts dropping out from the gum, I mean over obviously over erupting. And one by one you're losing because you're losing one tooth, a few years later become another tooth or so, and then you end up several teeth. And then when they come into me, he says, do you know what? Don't worry about my back teeth because nobody see them. It's important, it's absolutely important. They need to know that obviously back teeth are even more important my opinion, obviously, to the front teeth, but obviously, front teeth you need to um, mm -hmm. bite and then chew. Um, uh, then educate people, obviously, about oral health, the how they clean, how they obviously look after their teeth, or so that they're not going to lose uh, lose teeth. Because dentistry has changed dramatically compared with I don't know 30, 40 years. Because obviously, people, the patients complaining that oh, that dentist wasn't great 40 years ago when I was a kid. And I'm scared now. I uh, I'm don't like dentists or so. But there are different techniques these days. And it's not 40, 50 years ago. Yeah, that's actually, it's very similar to, um, I spoke to a dental nurse earlier in the week and she said she faces the same thing of um, older patients who are just petrified. And it's often because when they were children, it was mm. just a completely different experience going to the dentist. And that takes a long time to to change I guess it's like anything if you have one bad experience with something you're quite hesitant to to do it again but yeah it's your health you've got to to take care of it absolutely you are yeah. right yeah it's always really nice to talk to people that are passionate about what they do absolutely I think yeah. as, I, as I mentioned it if you put your heart in anything and you are passionate about something it's always the result is great mm -hmm. I love dentistry and the uh, majority of my patients are very, very grateful. Um, they like me a lot and uh, I enjoy and they love to come to see me. And yes, some of them are nervous, as you just mentioned, one of the dental nurse was saying. And then they come to me and they start knowing me or so. The first, because obviously I do uh, sedation as well for nervous, nervous patients and they come. And then first visit, so if you're doing a, a surgery, then we do, I do sedation, then start trusting me and then they gain trust. And then after uh, second or third visit, they don't need sedation. Somebody that really, really was scared because they see that uh, I care about them. And the same as, as cooking, I'm really passionate about cooking. And then uh, the result become nice as well. The, 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 the dish I produce and create always tastes nice. Uh, another another uh, funny story I'm, I'm telling you a few years ago my daughter was um, quite little and uh, in her school they had international days and they were saying that if somebody can cook in your family we can um, obviously invite them that they can cook for us 
And then my daughter, as soon as they said, okay, oh yeah, my dad is a good chef. I said, okay. And then she came home, says, dad, I booked you in for next Friday that you cook in school. I said, what, how can you do that? Because it's not for five people. I'm no normally cooking maximum five, 10 people. So when a guest comes, says, no, I can't change uh, uh, the date and I can't tell them that you don't cook. I said, okay. I was a bit uh, nervous, obviously. And I prepared, I emailed them what they want. And I suggested uh, I will do uh, rice, saffron rice with barberries, pistachio and chicken dish. I said, okay, that's fine. And I had a dessert uh, rice pudding as well, Iranian rice pudding with saffron. So I went there and because I was a bit worried and I asked my brother, and they're funny, my brother is a dentist as well. And then he said, uh, he is passionate about cooking. I said, please, I beg you, come and help me because I cannot cook. And the day before I asked email school, so how many people I need to cook? They said 340 people. So <laughs> I went there. And I cooked, obviously we had two people um, there helped us as well. You can't believe it. We cooked for 340 plus staff and amazing. And all the children loved it. Twice they were eating or so. And uh, yeah, because I believe that I can do it. I can achieve it. I can. Uh, so we cooked for nearly 370 people, uh, 340 plus 30 staff and everybody enjoyed. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know what I would do if one of my children came home and were like, well, guess what? You're cooking for 300 people tomorrow and get in the kitchen. I'd be like, right. No, <laughs> we're going to Tesco's. We'll get some ready meals. We'll sort it out. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh amazing i better not tell my family that because uh i'll give them ideas <laughs> but yeah it's it's been really nice to to sit and chat to you and i'll i'll leave you to get on um with the rest of your day but yeah thank it's you. been fantastic thank you very much thank lovely you. to see you and uh hope uh, we can catch up again and talk again absolutely yeah brilliant thank you, Thanks. Thank you very much cheers there you are. That was Dr. Hussein Shafi sharing some brilliant stories there. And if you want to follow him on YouTube and Instagram, I'll link all of his information in the description of this podcast. Likewise, if you want to learn more about National Smile Month, follow at Smile Month on Twitter, on Facebook, search National Smile Month. And on Instagram, we are at Oral Health Foundation. You can also go to www.smilemonth.org for all information about the campaign. If you want some more bespoke oral health advice, our helpline are more than happy to help you. All of their information likewise will be in the description of this podcast. Thank you, Hussein, for joining me and thank you to you for listening.